So we talked about the differences, a little bit about the differences between canines and primates. But we are all social species. I'm also a horse person. I have chickens and rabbits. I have pigs. I, I have a lot of animals. And most of them are social species. Just some are predators and some are prey. So there's some things that we have in common with each other that it's really great to understand because it will help you in your dog life. So the first thing would be that social species have social boundaries. You ever had somebody come up and talk to you a little bit too close? and gets really uncomfortable and you want to push them back or you take a step back. So that's a social bubble. Others should not just enter your social bu bubble without your permission. So that is the number one that crosses all species. Respect, mutual respect. Now I'm going to think that all social species also see this pretty much the same. Respect equals calmness and space. So like I mentioned earlier, don't come in hot. Hi, that is disrespectful. If I met my clients um, in the parking lot and they opened their car door and I started jumping on them and touching them and being all over them, that's, um, that's not respectful. So as I'm teaching a dog, I want to maintain my respect for them, which means I have emotional fitness coming soon. You guys are going to be learning about this. I'm in control of my emotions. I don't let them affect my teaching. When I need to stand my ground or hold my ground and be patient, I'm not upset by it. When the dog does something inappropriate, I'm not upset by it. Everything seems calm and cool. And in social species, they discipline each other. I want you to understand discipline. Discipline is not punishment. Discipline, the root of the word discipline means teach. And I am a teacher. I'm a teacher of people and I'm a teacher of animals. And uh, I like to meld those things together. So Discipline is teaching, and that goes across all social species. Hierarchy, this is part of it. You'll have people who argue about hierarchy and dominance in dogs. I wish maybe it weren't true, but it is true. Uh, there is dominance in dogs and there's a hierarchy. Now, is the hierarchy bad? No, <laughs> it's natural. Have you ever been part of a school, part of a family or a workplace? There's a hierarchy. There's a hierarchy in dog packs. Why do we think, um, we have some expressions that we use a lot. Why do we say pecking order? I have chickens. <laughs> There's a hierarchy in the chickens. If you throw some food out, the top chickens come to it first. The boys are there to be sure the girls are eating and the follower chickens or the lower ranking chickens are out on the periphery. Many of them don't come into that at all. They literally just get what's left or go back over to the feeder. We see this in everything. Horses, uh, they bite, kick and jump on each other. The reason we don't let a horse just come into our space is that they can kill us. If they get panicked or if they're more dominant type and pushy, they can be on top of you and you could get really hurt. So understand that social species definitely have a hierarchy. It's not a bad thing unless you make it a bad thing. If you're a mean, harsh person who has no emotional fitness and you're out of control and you lose your crap all the time, it's bad. If you're a nice, stable person, it's good. So remember, what would you follow and be that? <laughs>